An otherwise normal cemetery has a bloody secret. And then we take a look at an odd subculture on the eBay market. People, <laughs> people, <laughs> people who are selling haunted dolls that are possessed with the spirits of dead prostitutes. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I have a special guest in the studio today. It is Veronica. Veronica, the haunted doll I purchased a long time ago. She's here. She's actually always here, but normally she's in the corner. Today, she's sitting on my desk. So if you hear any weird, um, it's her. It's little Veronica. I've had her for a couple months now, and I haven't had any unique uh, ghost stories to tell with her, but she's been my haunted doll. I bought her on eBay, and she's going to guest host today because we have a story coming up about... Not about her. Not about her. She's... She is not a sex worker doll. But anyways, we'll get to that in a second. First off, let's give a shout out to our newest Patreons, Donnie and Sarah. Donnie and Sarah, thank you so much for supporting the show. They are engaged. Isn't that cute? Little engaged couple sitting around, listening to a little Dead Rabbit Radio, drinking hot chocolate. I don't know. Or maybe just maybe just water. Maybe just sit around with a lukewarm glass of water and look at each other and go, oh, this is a good episode. Glug, glug, glug. I don't know. Whatever your beverage of choice is, I hope you're drinking it while you're listening to this. And you will be our pilots this episode, our captains. Whatever vehicle we take, you will be in charge. If you can't support the Patreon, that's fine too. Just help get the word out about the show. That really, really helps out a lot. We're going to toss Donnie the keys to the Jason Jalopy. Donnie, you ready? He's nodding. We are leaving behind Oregon. We are headed out to Pea Ridge, Arkansas. We're driving. We go to Pea Ridge, Arkansas. It's July 2020. So very, very recent story. We all get out. We're at a cemetery. And we see a bunch of detectives standing around a gravestone. (laughs) They're like, we should have solved this case before the man died. But we're not that good of a detective. But they're standing around this gravestone. And they're taking pictures of it and stuff, dusting for fingerprints. And also there is Shannon Nobles. Now, it's her grandpa's grave. And what happened was her grandpa, Fred Allen McKinney, died in May 2020. So just a month beforehand. And the reason why they're there is there's a dead animal laying on the gravestone. It's like, uh, it's like just a squirrel, just like totally just out. We're thinking, why are the cops here for a dead squirrel, right? Like, th- those, that's pretty common, right? Squirrels are always dying. And Shannon goes, no, 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 no. This isn't just a dead squirrel. This is the 10th dead squirrel we found on this grave. And we're like, hmm, now that is a mystery. What was happening was Shannon would come out to visit her grandpa's grave and there'd be a dead animal on it. And at first she's thinking, oh, I wonder if it's eating something. I wonder if it's eating the fake flowers. And it wasn't just squirrels either, right? Because then you just figure maybe squirrels were just found the place very comfortable. But it was all sorts of animals. (laughs) It was an elephant, a panda. It was all sorts of animals are found dead on her grandpa's tombstone. She puts up a trail cam. And there's an animal a couple days later on the gravestone. And she's like, oh, let's review the footage. So they see, at this point, 16 animals in total have been found dead on this gravestone. Not all at once. That'd be like a little pyramid. There's a live squirrel sitting on the top of the pyramid. 16 animals in all. They see with this trail cam, they see a Dodge Journey pull up. So they see this gray car pull up. They see this elderly man get out. And he's wearing like overalls. So he looks like a farmer, right? He totally looks like a stereotypical farmer. But he also was wearing a woman's wig and a woman's windbreaker. This must be a really high definition camera that they could pull all this stuff out. It says Lane Bryant on the jacket. And they, she, he's wearing sunglasses. So it's obviously this farmer dude in a bib and overalls, but he's wearing a woman's wig and he runs and he's dropping a dead animal on the gravestone. So they go, that's him. They show it to the cops and the cops go, well, it's obviously uh, somebody who's trying to disguise their identity. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he really likes wearing a wig, but it's most likely a really poor, th- poorly thought out disguise. So the cops go, okay, that's weird, but we don't know who that is. And Shannon didn't recognize him either. But one day she sees that same car pulling away from the cemetery. She spends a lot of time in the cemetery, but she sees the Dodge Journey pull out. So she begins following it. And when she follows it, she follows it to a store And out hops Joseph A. Stroud, a 78-year-old man who was Fred's neighbor. They didn't get along. They actually ended up in a lawsuit against each other. So 
Shannon's like, hmm, that makes sense. Now I know who it is. I think I know who it is, right? Wasn't wearing a woman's windbreaker this time, but the weather was quite good. So that would explain that. She goes to the cops and says, hey, I'm pretty sure it's this dude. Doesn't like my grandpa. And he's just throwing dead animals on his gravestone. The cops are like, yeah, we need a little more than that. Then she's out running. And her running path takes her by the cemetery. Now, this, at a certain point, you just kind of got to cut your losses, right? At a certain point, you got to go. There's a lot of places to run in Pea Ridge, Arkansas. I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's just not a one street town. And at the end of the street is a cemetery. But at a certain point, you're like, maybe I shouldn't run by the cemetery where all the dead animals are. But she's running, and she sees Stroud driving away from the cemetery. And she's like, I bet you anything. I bet you anything. So she runs, and she gets... Uh, she might have walked. She might have just walked at this point. It's not. She's not Wonder Woman. She may have just walked. She goes to her grandpa's grave. This is what I f- don't... This is what I find so bizarre about the story. Other than the fact that this old farmer man decides to disguise himself as a woman but still wears his overalls and bib, like the most stereotypical old man farmer clothes. That's the weir- that's p- weird part one. He wears a wig and a windbreaker and then <laughs> doesn't change any of his other clothes. That's weird. You're like, Jason, the dead animals is <laughs> far more weird than that. Sure. But then this is the weirdest part. When she gets there, she sees a dead possum on the grave. And then, to top it off, as if you couldn't get any weirder than that, there's like a vase built into, like, the gravestone where you, like, would put flowers and stuff. It was full of live baby possums. They're just, like, crawling all over each other. They're all pink and fleshy and stuff like that. What? what, Dude, what happened there, (laughs) man? Like, what? What? There's so much stuff to unpack there because, one... I don't I don't even know if I want to unpack this one. Did he kill the mom possum and then the babies follow him? And he's like, oh, so he threw him in the vase so they'd be safe. Did he throw him under the vase, assuming that they would have to like no one would discover him for a while. And then they would have to fight like the Hunger Games amongst each other till eventually one baby possum ate the other seven and then grew strong enough to break through the vase. And then he'd put that dead one on there. Or did he kill the possum? And then a bunch of babies pop out, which, like, if, I don't want to go into it. My point is, is that why did you do that? Why did you do that? It's bad enough that you're killing these animals, but then what are you like? Oh, might as well just put these in a vase. Like, what was that logic? So anyways, at this point, she was able to say, listen, I saw him leaving the scene. And then there was this dead possum. And then I have these baby possums that now they've bonded to me. Now I'm their mother. And they're like crawling all over. Or they're fault crawling along the police station, walking on the ink. They're like, dude, that's evidence. The possums are all like playing with cocaine. They're like, oh, that's going to botch so many trials. They arrest him. They end up arresting him. And his crime, apparently it's legal to throw dead animals around. That wasn't the crime. This, again, was super bizarre about this case. What he got in trouble for was at one point he cut an animal open and Donnie and Sarah are like, dude, seriously? This this is my fiance's in the car. She's like crying in the back. I'm sorry, guys. But, but here's something to wipe your eyes. It's a pelt. Apparently, what his crime actually was wasn't that. Wasn't kidnapping baby possums or stuff like that. It was the fact that he took a dead animal and draped it over the tombstone And blood got on the tombstone, and you can't wash it out, because apparently this tombstone is made of white cloth or something like that. Like, the blood is stained into it, so he has to buy him a new tombstone, basically. He got charged with a Class B felony. $2,500 in damages due to blood stains on a tombstone. I don't think that's what they charged him with. I don't think the cops are like, it's a 207, dead animal on a tombstone. Let's let's put your hands behind your back. But he, it, it was a... Basically, like a high-level vandalism charge. $2,500 vandalism charge. So, that is the story of Joseph A. Stroud, Master of Disguise. Um, He should have rented a car. I mean, that's how they identified him was his car. He he could have done a lot of things differently. First off, by not throwing dead animals on someone's grave. But, if he hadn't draped one over the tombstone, he'd be walking out of jail right now. He's like, ha ha ha, the law can't hold me. And he's walking away, and then on the rooftop... There's eight little silhouettes standing there. And they're little, little, little baby possums. Little naked, hairless baby possums. And they're looking down at him. And then he goes home and he's like cooking. Um, <laughs> he eats some. Yeah, what are they going to do against them? They're not Ninja Turtles. Then he gets home and they come, they're in his house and they're like, we're going to get back at you. And he just scoops 
<laughs> he just scoops them up and eats them like chitlins. I don't know where I was going with that. Even if they were, even if they were Ninja Turtles, or like they're still tiny. He's like eating them like a shrimp. That's a dismal story. Sorry about. It. Sorry, Donnie and Sarah. I was hoping the little baby possums could beat them up, but I got I gotta, I gotta be at least a little realistic. Speaking of baby possums. I have no way to segue from that. I have no way to really segue from that to our next story. So, Sarah, we are going to toss you the keys of the carpenter copter. You're going to take us for this first jump of this flight. We're flying up in that carpenter copter. As we're flying away in the carpenter copter, I turn. I put my arm around your shoulder. I, I pull you close. And I go, hey, come here, come here, come here. Let me tell you about a little movie called The Vanished. So I actually have been working with a marketing team. I have four digital copies. I originally was five. I had five digital copies, but I took one to watch. And I watched it, and I actually enjoyed it. I'd love to talk to you guys about it. But first, new today on digital. It just came out on digital. Anne Heche and Thomas Jane star in this gripping psychological thriller called The Vanished. It's directed by Peter Facinelli. We'll talk about him in a second, too. A family vacation takes a terrifying turn. When two parents discover that their young daughter has vanished without a trace, stopping at nothing to find her, the search for the truth leads to a shocking revelation where nothing is what it seems in this intense thriller. Own or rent The Vanished on digital today and watch it at home tonight. Rated R from Paramount Pictures. So I watched it and I do have four digital copies, again previously five. It's weird. I can't legally hold a contest. There's all these sorts of rules. So I'm trying to figure out a way to get four of those copies out to you guys. So if you guys are interested in the movie, I can't say. Do, it's super weird. I don't even know how I'm going to get these four digital copies out. But even if you don't get a digital copy, I recommend checking it out. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Peter Facinelli was the lead vampire in the Twilight movies. He was Edward Cullen's adopted dad. And he directs this movie. This is only his second movie he's directed. And there's also, everyone in the movie is a big old weirdo, right? Like, it's a really interesting movie. You get, it's just a bunch of weirdos in like a hundred yard location. Everyone is just has this weird secret. No spoilers, but one of the characters is, a, is, is an even bigger, bigger weirdo. And when they go to his house, when they go to his location, He has a copy of the Twilight book on his... I think it was actually Eclipse was the actual book. And I'm thinking, did the director choose... (laughs) Choose to make the creepiest guy in the movie a fan of Twilight that he's reading this book? Or did the set designer throw it in as a joke and the director didn't... I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff in the movie. Check it out. It is available today. Rent or own today from Paramount Pictures. Let's go ahead. We're leaving behind Pea Ridge, Arkansas. We're leaving behind Paramount Pictures Mountain. Sarah and Donnie are both flying the carpenter copter at the same time because, see, they love each other, so they're, they're in sync. They're, we hope, we hope, right? We hope they don't have a fight. They're spilling each other's lukewarm water. We hope that they can think as one couple as they fly us safely out to a toy factory. And there's, like, all these dolls being created. There's, like, little mechanical arms putting them in the sockets and stuff like that. And these dolls are just kind of moving down a conveyor belt. And the reason why we're here is because this is what a doll is supposed to look like. And you're like, Jason, I know what a doll is supposed to look like. You buffoon. You took us all the way to a doll factory just so you could do this intro. But see, while we're at the doll factory, you're right. It's probably not the best place to be. It's super noisy. There's dolls everywhere. Just huge machines. I pull out my laptop because this is really all we needed to do. <laughs> Sit down. We're like, hey, we asked the boss, can we use your office for the rest of the segment? And he's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. You go upstairs. We're on the internet. I, the other day I was like, okay, so I have Veronica. She's a haunted doll. I bought her a long time ago. She's pretty cool. I was like, I wonder if, should I buy another haunted doll? Would the ghosts get along? Would there be like fighting each other and stuff like that? Which admittedly would be kind of cool. But so I was looking for haunted dolls. But then I found a, I found a new layer. This is a whole subculture of doll. These are dolls. These are normal dolls that would be found being made at a factory. But these dolls are possessed, not with just, just run-of-the-mill ghosts, but possessed with sexual ghosts, which is which is like eight levels of gross, right? I mean, it's, it, killing animals, throwing them on a grave would be like seven layers of gross. But let's look. These are actual descriptions. Let's take a look at some of these descriptions. For $200, you could buy this haunted doll. Now, I'm going to be fair. I'm almost for sure 
that this, I almost think that this doll was mislisted. Because in the description, they keep referring to it as a ring. Here's part of this description. All your dark little secrets of sexual lust and fantasy will rise. This amazing talisman ring will bring new submissive friends into your life who will become part of your erotic adventures. The last thing I want is a bunch of toadies running around, right? Like, when I think of submissive friends, sure, you could be, like, trying to be this whole Christian Grey thing where some chick shows up and she's like, I'll do whatever you want. But I also imagine Igor, right? I'm like, ha ha ha, I have this doll and or ring. And I either wear the ring or I carry the doll around or wear the doll. And then a bunch of, like, Igors show up and they're like, oh, yes, master. Whatever you want us to do, sexual or otherwise, they're winking their one eye. I'm like, gross, bro. I don't know, go do the dishes or something. Do you want me to do them naked? No, no, God. So anyway, but I guess the term submissive in this context, but they keep referring it to it as a ring. It's it, it, But it's listed as, this is what it's listed, all the links are in the show notes, so you can purchase this doll, $200 by the way, it's a porcelain doll. It's listed as Haunted Sex Attraction Magic Doll XXX Adult Only Live the Life of a Porn Super. <laughs> they didn't finish it. It's not a porn superstar. It's just a porn super. You're a porn super. And then it gets, this is where I start to think whoever wrote this knows who they, they have this very, very specific group of people that they're either marketing to, <laughs> i.e. creeps, or the person who's writing this is like, someday I'll have you. This is, you can have any submissive per you're going to attract submissive people from all over. But specifically, look at this passage. This will bring you a sexy barista. What? The hot guy in the gym. The bartender. Your friend or acquaintance, your colleague, whoever you wish, he will be filled. Oh, and that's a key thing that I should say right on the bat. I'm pretty sure these dolls are all marketed. I hope these dolls are marketed towards women, right? I Again, I hope. I really, really hope so. Most supernatural stuff is marketed towards women. Even though the ghost shows are all men, it's mostly women who are into paranormal. We've talked about that a lot of times on the show, but... Um, this one definitely is. So you can get your sexy barista, which I don't think I've ever seen a male sexy barista. Right? Is that a thing? Is that like a woman's fantasy now? Because they smell like coffee beans and stuff like that? Because they can get you discounts? Or I'll punch your card twice, honey. Click, click. Like, what is that? But anyway, so you get this ring and or doll, and you can uh, uh, take control of that sexy barista or the hot guy in the gym. So, it, guys, if you ever feel yourself falling in love with someone and wanting to quit your job and become a barista, check her doll collection. She might, and her bank account, because if she has no money, she's blowing it all on these stupid dolls. But that's not it. That's not it. Because just one doll, right? That would be a one-off thing. I saw that one, and I thought, that was the first one I saw, and I go, that's insane. And then I thought, there must be more of these out there. There, there has to be more of these out here. This is not an outlying thing. We are now going to meet Elizabeth for $24. She's only, This is a very cheap one. If you don't have $200 to spend and you don't want a bunch of Igors running around, $24, you can get Elizabeth. I'm going to read you this, this first part verbatim. This is 100% what was written in the listing. Elizabeth, found dead in river. <laughs> okay, wait. I can't start laughing yet. You're like, Jason, that's gruesome. Hold on. It starts off, this is the posting, okay? Elizabeth found dead in river. Next sentence. So excited! I found another box from this set of dolls that are inhabited by sex worker women who were supposedly murdered by Jack the Ripper. This is what I don't understand. Are you excited that she drowned in the river? Are you excited you found dolls that are possessed with dead prostitutes? Are you excited that they're from... First off, I'm pretty sure Jack the Ripper, his name wasn't Jack the Drowner. So I don't know how this woman died in a river, or is she implying the doll died in the river? You should never say Elizabeth found dead in the river, and then your next two words be so excited. There's a whole lot of stuff going on here. But she le- she weaves this crazy tale. This selling was basically had its own short story attached. There was a girl whose mom was a sex worker who died, so then she was an orphan, and she went to live with her aunt, and then she became a sex worker, and then got abused by a pimp, and then left the pimp. None of this has to do with the dolls. This is modern times. This isn't, uh, this isn't, has nothing to do with the doll. This is just in the description. The woman leaves the pimp and then gets rescued by a madam. 
So her and a bunch of other girls worked in a brothel. And the madam was very kind to these young women that she was using to pimp. She's still a pimp, right? It's just a different name for it. And the madam goes, Well, you young ladies, I am going to put a doll in each of your rooms. This doll will watch over you. And not only will it watch over you, it'll make the sex even... <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say this. <clears throat> the old lady, the old madam goes, I, this doll will make the sex even better. If you keep this doll in your room, make the sex even better. And then the madam dies. And then the prostitute gets the doll, has like three or four of these dolls, and then has given them to this eBay seller to sell. Now, the madam explained all, all of that, all of that stuff with the girl like going, have, being a sex worker, her mom being a sex worker, all gets to the point that these dolls are all possessed with the victims of Jack the Ripper's ghosts. So the madam had these dolls that, I don't know, were passed along through pimp history from one pimp to another. This doll that was possessed with a dead prostitute, the spirit of a dead prostitute, if you put it in your room, it makes the sex better. Now, let's assume that... Let's just, let's just assume that lunacy is true for just a few minutes. One... $24 is completely underselling a 100-year-old ghost, right? I would be awfully offended if I was murdered in one of the most famous, if not the most famous, serial killer case. 24 bucks? Come on, man. Let's say it's true. You have the ghost of a woman who was a sex worker who was brutally murdered, is trapped in a doll, and then you make her watch other sex workers have sex for, a, <laughs> for probably 100 years? If this is true, that's absolutely horrible. If it's not true, it's just a doll sitting in the corner while you're banging dudes and whatever. It's just kind of creepy. I mean, you imagine the Johns come in the room and they're like, hey, hey, wait, what's, what's up with that doll? And, oh, no, 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 no. It makes the sex better. What? What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? And she has to tell this whole story. Maybe that was part of it. Maybe the story would take so long to be like, your hour's up, buddy. Time to go. But anyways... Though that's 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 disgusting, right? Let's say that it's true. Let's say that it's true. You're basically using a murdered woman's ghost as your sex slave in a doll that's forced to watch. The eyes are always open, right? And now for just twenty four bucks, you can buy this and put it in your room to make your sex better. But that isn't even the weirdest one I found because then we go to. Haunted Doll Miracle Spirit Vessel Sexual Aggressive. The grammar, guys. The grammar is really bad, but I'm, I guess I'm not going to nitpick that. This one's only $10.50, so I mean, if you, if you didn't have those 24 bucks to spend, but this one gets a little more complicated because this one is actually from West Virginia. Let me read you this description here. The spirit is to believe that of an 18-year-old girl named Miracle. Though it was never proven... Many believe Miracle was strangled and killed by her stepfather to keep his horrible secret of sexual abuse hidden. I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing at whoever thought that was a good marketing gimmick. Who goes, hmm, I have this doll. I want to sell it. But who's going to pay ten fifty for this doll? I know. Total lunatics. Like, why? You're making it up. You're making it up, and you even admit in the beginning, oh, I don't I don't know if this story's true or not. I don't know. You don't have to. Come on. That's gross. The Jack the Ripper's victims are just shaking their heads right now. That's what you make up? That's seriously what you make up to sell your doll for $10.50. You make up this horrible story. Anyways, so then we go on. It turns out that she's murdered by her stepfather in this house. Her body is put in the cross. None of this is true, by the way. I mean, this is just what she's saying. Don't try looking up West Virginia news. But anyways, so apparently, according to this story, she's murdered by her stepfather. Her body is hidden in the crawl space up in the attic or something like that. And then a fraternity moves in. And then they find the body. They're like, Toga, Toga. No, I th actually, I think the body is found earlier. I think that's found before the fraternity shows up. But... The body's found. The fraternity shows up, and they find the doll. They find this doll, and they say that it's super weird because of this fraternity. Now, the fraternity reports, again, it's made up, but the, the eBay says the fraternity members would wake up. They'd have scratches all over them in the middle of the night. Sometimes they'd wake up, and there'd be a strange woman sitting on top of them. 
that's not paranormal activity. That's just what happens with a bunch of drunk dudes, right? They're like jumping into bushes. They're wrestling with each other, are biting each other's butts. And then they wake up and they're like, what? I don't remember any of that stuff. This is being drunk. This is being an alcoholic 20 year old, right? What? Oh, how did I get all these, how did I get all these abrasions on my body? They're like, dude, you attacked that cop last night. Oh yeah, totally. There's a doll sitting in the corner. Can't blame it on the doll. They said that the fraternity, they thought that the, they thought the basement was haunted. So they never wanted to do their laundry. Show me a dude who loves to do laundry. That's my new excuse for any chore I don't want to do. Uh, (laughs) <laughs> that that's haunted i don't even know what it is but i don't want to do it it's super haunted over there there's like a bunch of ghosts standing there i'm not doing it so anyways you can buy this doll that was previously in a frat house that was possessed by this horrible crime and apparently caused the fraternity people to get all scratched up you want you want to wake up with scratches all over your body you can buy this doll it's only 10 50 you don't want to ever do the laundry again you can buy it for ten dollars and fifty cents we got one more doll to look at Because you go, okay, Jason, okay. None of those dolls are interested to me. None of those dolls are interesting to me. I want a doll who's capable of committing a felony. Well, here you go. Here you go, guys. For $32, you can buy Mandy. Mandy the doll. The haunted doll. Here's this one. This one is referred to as a street girl. And that's how she's actually referred to. But she's a sex worker. She's murdered in the apartment. Couple moves in. The guy will wake up at night when his wife's out of town. He'll feel like someone laying next to him. He'll get a little back massage. He'll feel like hands on his like legs and stuff like that. He's getting a little bit of attention. That's kind of cool, right? She's not totally nuts. She's not scratching you. She's not biting you. She's just hanging out, giving you a back rub. The perfect girlfriend, some might say. You don't have to listen to her. You don't have to listen to anything she says. She just kind of floats there. And then when you go to bed, she appears. And then when you wake up in the morning, she's just gone for the rest of the day. What? That's me. I'm going to buy this one. But, sorry, Veronica. But here's the trick. The woman would show back up, right? And the guy's like, dang it. The guy's like, oh, man, that ghost gives such good back rubs. The woman would show back up and she would feel uncomfortable. She would feel like she wasn't welcome in her own home to the point that one day she was walking down the stairs and she tumbles down the stairs. She falls down the stairs. She feels herself get pushed. Now, whether it was a little doll hands pushing her, which really wouldn't do much, right? Or if it was the forceful push of a ghost, we don't know. Probably the second one because she actually did tumble down the stairs. She thinks that the ghost is haunted with a malevolent spirit. And eBay also, not eBay, eBay knows this is all phony. But the seller of this says, oh, no, 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 this one, this is the actual quote. We do not believe this spirit is friendly to females and can be very jealous of them, unquote. So if you want to arrange an accident for somebody for $32, talk about... Talk about an efficient hitman, right? There'd be no evidence. I'm not condoning this. Again, it's made up. So you could buy a hundred of these dolls. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. But let's say let's say it actually did work. What they're basically selling is a loaded gun that can never be traced. I wonder if, actually, now that I think about that, I wonder if you could sneak one of these onto an airplane. Like, you can't bring box cutters. You can't bring any sort of knives and stuff like that. But if you brought a, <laughs> if you brought a haunted doll onto an airplane... Could they stop you? Now, they're going to assume it's a regular doll. They're also going to assume you're a big old weirdo because you're an adult and you're carrying a doll around. But I wonder if you could bring a haunted doll onto an airplane and, and just, like, set it... You buy it, buy it a seat, right? And then it just sits there. And then, like, it's, like, running around. I guess they would know something was up when the doll was running up and down the aisles. I think at that point, the air marshal would just shoot it. Like, I don't think the air mar- I don't. I think at that point, security's going to go... Uh, we, we might want to start checking dolls. We might want to start having them little dolls go through a scanner for ectoplasm, little x-ray, a little cartoon ghost in the doll. Don't do that, actually, by the way. Do not try sneaking a doll onto a plane. To be fair, let's put on our conspiracy caps to wrap up this episode. What makes these things spooky is really how mundane they are. They're just normal looking dolls, right? You could have you could have tons of these sitting at Goodwills. You could go to your aunt's house and on her shelf she has this collection of dolls that she's bought and sold over eBay. And these are dolls. These dolls were identified as being haunted because they have providence. Again, none of this is true. But <laughs> just or for the sake of wrapping up this episode, let's put on our conspiracy cap. These dolls have a story connected to them. You can't verify it, but they have a story connected to them. But how many dolls out there? were in the clutches of a woman as she was being brutally murdered by Jack the Ripper or any other serial killer or just regular killer. 
can't believe I can't believe I'm wrapping the episode up with this. But we got to end it somehow, and I just have nowhere to end it. It's so brutal. So, anyways, these dolls, though, after the body is processed and taken out of the crime scene, everything that this woman owned is just there in an empty apartment for a day and a night and a day and a night, and the sun rises and sets. And that doll is just leaning there against the wall. Nobody else knows it's infused with her energy. No one else knows that that was the doll she grew up with. It was something she always held on to. To remind her of a more peaceful, stable life. But as her life did descend into bitterness and hopelessness, that doll was still that beacon of light. So when she was brutally murdered in her one-bedroom apartment, that's where her soul reached out to. But see, that doll wasn't given a provenance. That doll doesn't have any sort of story connecting it. It was just picked up by the landlord and dropped off at Goodwill. So that doll goes through Goodwill, gets purchased, gets played with, gets sold to someone else, and it just kind of moves throughout the region. Now, maybe you buy it. Maybe you see this doll on eBay that just is like, oh, I remember growing up with a doll like that. Maybe your aunt buys it at a swap meet. It's a normal looking doll, but behind its dead eyes is a life. The life of a woman who never had a chance at happiness. Her soul sits behind those wide open eyes, that porcelain head attached to a cloth body. And it just sits there and looks, looks out of the display case into the empty room in front of her. She wants so badly to live again. That energy just builds more and more and more. Some people might see that as sexual energy, but what is sexual energy other than life energy? It's one of the main reasons why we're here is to procreate. While these dolls may be creating some sort of intense sexual energy, what it's actually doing is creating so much sexual intensity that it's able to drain it off. You think it's a supernova, but it's really a black hole. So while this doll is sitting in this display case, it infuses the room with sexual energy. You may key onto the fact, you may not. If it's at your aunt's house, you probably won't put two and two together unless you're having sex at your aunt's house. But you understand what I'm saying. Maybe your aunt is having a lot of sex. My point is, is that this wouldn't exist in a vacuum. Something that could give off and create intense sexual energy would be doing it for its own benefit. And if you had this doll long enough and it kept draining and draining and draining, it's building up its own reservoir. And then one day you wake up completely refreshed. You've never had such a great sleep in your night. It's almost like you've slept for decades. And you get up, you go in the mirror, check yourself out, go off into the world. Or at least your body does. Because you are now behind those dead eyes. The spirit of the young woman finally gathered enough energy from you that she could pull itself from the false body into your body of flesh and blood. You are now the doll. You are now trapped. If these things are real, they are nothing to mess around with. If these things are actually real, it is the last thing you would want to have in your house. Because whatever energy it could give, it could take back. Until eventually, it takes everything from you. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be your email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at deadrabbitradio. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys.